afternoon everyone. I have not filmed at all today yet. Um, this morning I was just not in the mood. I didn't sleep very well last night um, and I also couldn't eat until I went down. So I was getting increasingly grumpy. Um, so this morning I did a bit of work on the cover letter and the application questions for a job application I have due on Monday. That's the one that I was, um, that the research statement is on and I think it's pretty much there. I've sent it off for final proofreading um, to my partner. So hopefully I can get that um, submitted over the weekend and not have to sort of be a mad rush on Monday. And oh, the more I have been working on these documents, the more I really, really want this job. Um, I remember writing very early in the job season about a postdoc fellowship that I interviewed for but didn't get, um, that I really, really, really wanted. Um, I will link below to the jobs.ac.uk blog post where I talk about dealing with not getting that job. Um, this, in terms of all the jobs that I've applied for this season, um, this is up there with that one as kind of like the pinnacle of the kind of job that I would like. And doing this research and being in an interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary space and having the room to do some cool um, cross-disciplinary stuff. Um, I think would really help my work and I think I can really contribute to some great cross-disciplinary conversations. Um, after that, I just I couldn't be bothered. So I've been reading, um, I'll get it and show you. I've been reading Helen Sword's Stylish Academic Writing. Um, I have a paranoia about my writing and I know exactly where it started. It started in my MA examiner's report where one of them basically said Ellie's writing is rubbish um, and I've never really gotten over that. <laughs> um, so I'm constantly trying to improve my writing and my writing is getting a lot better and I can see that but I think that you know working on um, actual academic practice is also something that we need to be doing not just our research not just pedagogy but also the way that we communicate because that's what we essentially are as academics as humanities academics is communicators and we should be communicating um, apart from that obviously I had my um, thing done um, I've got a really painful cannula in my hand, but I'm going to get to go home today, which I'm really excited about. And I'm wearing this fetching pink hospital gown. <laughs> um, so tonight when I get home, I'm going to go through my cover letter and my application questions and my research statement with my partner um, and hopefully get all that ready to just send off tomorrow morning um, so I don't have to worry about it and I will check back in with you again. Bye. So as you can see, I am back at home. Um, I know I said before that I was gonna do some things when I got home, but I'm not going to. And I think that that is a wise decision. Um, I said yesterday that I was going to say a few words about why I decided to do this week even though it's not a normal part of my week to go into hospital and there are two main reasons for that. For some people it is a normal part of their week um, or their month or their term or their quarter or their year. It is a normal part of their lives and that needs to be reflected in the discussion that we have about uh, disability access in academia. Um, some people do need to do these things on a regular basis and it is still possible and a lot of people still go into hospital and work. Um, I said two, actually three. The second reason is 
Um, I wanted you guys to sort of see how unpredictable my journey is. I actually wasn't meant to go into hospital this week. I was meant to go in last week um, and it got pushed back. So I had already planned to film this week when I learned that I would be in hospital this week. So the third reason is because when you are in a precarious situation, there are things that you do that a person in a not precarious situation would never have to do. And the more precarious your position, the more of those things you have to worry about. I was re I'm not sure if this came across, but I was really anxious about the fact that I would have to go into hospital and potentially lose two days of work. Um, and I, I'm not in a position right now to, to do that, even though you think, oh, this person is unemployed, so obviously right now is the perfect time for them to go into hospital and not have to worry about things. But actually, it's not. And even for academics on short-term contracts, I would wager that for a minor procedure like the one that I had, um, they would be working in hospital. And yes, you do kind of reduced stress work, like I just did some general reading and teaching prep. And this morning, um, as I said to you, you know, I wasn't really in the mood, so I was just kind of doing some brushing up on my academic practice, as it is. Um, but these are things which are really can be really, really stress-inducing, really anxiety-inducing. And the point of this week of vlogging is to show the work that an unemployed academic does just in order to keep themselves in the game. Um, like, if I do nothing, then I can basically like wave goodbye to any notion of ever getting an academic career because I, I need to still be producing new research. I need to still be publishing. I need to, you know, still be doing all of the stuff that is required of a an academic in post, but without the paycheck. So that's kind of the reason. Tomorrow um, we'll be back to regular programming. Uh, Sunday, um, I will show you what a day off looks like for me. So that will be fun. Um, and then on Monday, I'll film like a, what I learned in the week of vlogging. Um, and then I'll take it from there, I guess. I've been really enjoying it. So I hope you guys have been enjoying it too. Um, and if you want to keep watching, please subscribe and Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.